Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for joining me again this week for part three, the final part of the physical joint operators series. And the final joint operator we're gonna be talking about today is the hash match joint operator. And the hash match joint is really the workhorse of the, the physical joint operators, in my opinion, because it can match anything you throw at it as long as there's an equality predicate and there's enough space in tempdb. So unlike nested loops joins uh, and merge joins, which can run out of memory and you know merge joins especially, the data needs to be kind of pre-sorted going into the join operator. Uh, hash match joins don't care, they'll do it as long as you have enough space. So let's dive in and take a look at how a hash match join works internally. And then in the second half of the video, we'll talk about what it means uh, in for us when we see a hash match join in our execution plans. The base hash match algorithm works like this. During the first phase, also known as the build phase, SQL Server builds an in-memory hash table from one of the two inputs. The hashes are calculated based on the join keys of the input data, and then that whole row is stored in the hash table under a hash bucket. Most of the time, there's only one row of data per hash bucket, except when you have multiple rows with duplicate join keys or there's a hash collision. Sometimes with the hashing function being used in SQL Server, collisions can occur, and so totally different join keys will actually get the same hash. It's rare, but it can happen. Once the hash table is built, SQL Server begins the probe phase of the hash match join. During this second phase, SQL Server calculates the join key hash for each row in the second input and checks to see if it exists in the hash table created in the first build phase. If it finds a match for that hash, it doesn't stop there, but it then has to verify if the join keys themselves actually match. This is because of that hash collision problem that we talked about earlier. SQL Server can't be certain that just because the hash is matched that the join keys themselves actually match, so it has to check that one more time. So a hash match join isn't necessarily the fastest type of join uh, for all types of data because it is having to run that hash function using CPU cycles to calculate the hashes of the join keys, uh, but the thing that makes a hash match really special is that it can use tempdb uh, to, to join really large data sets. So the way this works is that during the build phase, if SQL Server can't create all of the hashes that hash table in memory because it's just too large, what it can do is start spilling to tempdb. What happens is that it, SQL Server will keep as many buckets as it can in memory, and whichever ones it can't keep will just get stored in tempdb. Then, during the probe phase, SQL Server joins any rows of data that are in memory, that are in that in-memory hash table, um, and any hashes that it doesn't find in that hash table, it writes to tempdb. Once all of the rows from our second probe input have been processed, it loads whatever's in tempdb into memory, and then it continues doing the comparisons there. And that's what makes a hash match join really cool. SQL Server can do the join in multiple phases by staging some of that data into tempdb and then loading it back into memory when some space has been cleared up. That's what makes a hash match so powerful. So now that we've discussed the internals of how a hash match join works, let's switch gears and talk about what it means when we see one in our execution plans. One of the first things I consider when I see a hash match join in my execution plan is, uh, is this really necessary because although a hash match join is very powerful, it's a blocking operator. SQL Server can't continue with that part of the execution plan until that whole hash table is built, which is why it's a blocking operator, uh, which generally, you know, isn't always great for performance. So it's always good to see, you know, why is a hash match join being used? Is there something we can do to prevent that? Because in general, blocking operators uh, don't improve performance of our queries. And I don't only look at hash match joins because they're blocking operators. If I see one, especially if I see the little exclamation point that indicates that it's spilling to tempdb, you know, it's great that a hash match join can join any size of data basically, but spilling to tempdb is really slow and inefficient. In those scenarios, when I do see spillage to tempdb, I do try to look at, okay, can I trigger a different type of physical join operator, either a nested loops join or a merge join, or is something happening with the memory grant where SQL Server was getting bad estimates from the statistics 
and was underestimating the amount of memory required to build that hash table that was causing SQL Server to then spill to tempdb. Um, those are just things to consider and look at because you really want to avoid spilling to disk. If there's something like adding a column to an index uh, that'll allow SQL Server to use a different physical join operator, you'll probably do better, or at the very least, you'll get better estimates, better memory grant estimates, so hopefully you won't have to spill to tempdb. And so that's it. Thanks again for tuning in. As I mentioned, this is the final episode of this physical join operator series. If you've missed the previous two episodes, I've linked to them below. Be sure to check them out. And with that, I hope you have a great start to the new year. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please press that subscribe button. It means a lot to me and you'll always be notified of when I post new videos so you won't miss them. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next week.